So I thought I'd quickly show you guys how to update the firmware on a JK inverter BMS. What you're gonna need for this process is a computer running Windows. You're also gonna need the JK BMS uh, PC software or the monitoring software. Also a firmware update file. You're gonna need a USB to RS-485 adapter and an ethernet cable that you don't mind cutting up and more about that later. And luckily enough for us, it is basically a four step process. So we'll start off by downloading and installing the, the JK BMS uh, monitoring software on our computer. We'll then go download the firmware update file that is specific to your model of BMS. Then we're gonna prepare our USB to RS-485 uh, RS uh, communications cable and then all that's left to do is to install the updated firmware on the BMS. And as a side note, today I'm gonna to be using this Wave Industries USB to RS-485 adapter. And so far this thing has been working really great for me. So you can download this BMS a PC software and the firmware update files directly from the JK website. However, at the moment I found it way easier just to head over to Andy's website at the Off Grid Garage and download all the stuff from there. He's got a phenomenal resource with a lot of effort that he's put in there. Um, and if you want to learn about this stuff, maybe you've been doing it for many years, or if you are new to the solar and the battery game, go and check that resource out. It is wonderful. Andy, thank you very much for all of the hard work that you've put in there over the years. And I'm going to put a link to his website in the description, so make sure you go and check that out. And also, if the links or the download process change in the future, I'll see if I can include the updated process in the description. So if you guys are getting stuck or you find that what I've described today doesn't quite work, just pop down there and see if there's any changes. So to download, just head over to Andy's website. It's offgridgarage.com and go to the batteries menu and then click BMS and balancer. Now scroll down and click on JK BMS resources and this is gonna take you through to his download resources. Select the PC software folder and then go ahead and download the BMS software. Once it's downloaded, you can go ahead and install the software and luckily enough, it's pretty straightforward so I won't even bother showing the installation. Now you guys need to download the correct firmware for your BMS. Now, you'll first need to check what hardware version of the BMS that you have, now your specific hardware version. And to do this, you can go ahead and open up the, the BMS app on your phone and you can connect to the BMS. And then at the top right hand corner, there's three little dots, you can click those and then click on about. And you can see I have model number PB1A16S15P and then I've got hardware version 15 and software version 15.11. So now that you've got this information for your specific BMS, go back to the Off Grid Garage website and then select the firmware folder. Then you can go ahead and select the hardware version folder that matches your BMS. That's the hardware version you've just looked at. So mine is version 15, so I'll go ahead and then select that. And then you need to select the firmware version you would like to use. And in my case, I'm going to use 15.17. But just use the version that you are most comfortable with. Now you need to choose the firmware version that matches your model of BMS. And mine specifically is PB1A16S15P, but select whichever one matches the model of BMS that you have. So the first step is to make up the cable that connects between the BMS and the RS-485 adapter. And for this, luckily enough, we can use a standard ethernet cable. So you can go ahead and cut the plug off one of the ends of that ethernet cable. Then carefully strip back the insulation to expose the four pairs of wires. Now the only wires that you're going to need are the orange white and the solid orange wires. So untwist these two wires and cut the other three pairs off. Then strip back a small amount of insulation on the orange white and the solid orange wire. Now we need to connect the orange white wire to the B- and the solid orange wire to the A+, on the RS-485 adapter. And in this specific case, using this adapter that I have, the ground wire doesn't need to be connected for this whole lot to work. Okay, step one is to write down, or better yet, take screenshots of all of the settings in case something goes wrong with the update. Step two is to set the address on dip switches on the BMS interface board and address number one should work just fine. Step number three, plug the RS-485 adapter into your computer and wait for Windows to recognize and install the drivers for the adapter. Now some adapters may require that you install the drivers manually and if this is the case, then just follow the instructions that came with your specific adapter. You'll also wanna plug the other end of the Ethernet 
Ethernet cable into the RS-485 parallel port on the BMS. Step four is to open up the BMS PC software and select the device ID, which corresponds to the address that you've just set on the DIP switches on the BMS. Now, if you're not sure what address this is, it's quite easy to find. You can just uh, use your smartphone and connect to the BMS once again, go into settings and then scroll down to device address and you'll be able to see the address number right here. Step number five is to select the COM port of your RS-485 adapter, and in my case, it's COM port number three. And then step number six, click connect. <laughs> now, after a second or two, the BMS real-time information should show up, and now you are connected. Step number seven, at the top right corner, click the button with the three dots, and then select upload fireware. Step number eight, click the three dots on the upload fireware pop-up window, and then go ahead and select the firmware file that you downloaded earlier. And lastly, step number nine, click on start updating, and then wait for the update process to complete. And once the update process is complete, you should see an update successful box pop up. Now you should be able to confirm that the firmware version that you've just uploaded to the BMS is in fact there. And to do that, you can go over to the about tab and the upload software version will be shown right here. And in this case, as you can see, it is 15.17. Now I also think it's good practice after you've completed the whole update process is to connect to your BMS and check through each and every setting just to make sure that everything is still correct after the update. And in my case, luckily everything looks perfectly fine. And that's pretty much it as far as the update process goes. Now, if you guys are interested, I have made video reviews of the JK Inverter BMS and also of that older style BMS. So I'll leave links in the description for that. I'm also busy working on another video where we're gonna connect the JK Inverter BMS to a SunSync uh, inverter via CAN communication. And I can tell you so far, mistakes have been made. <laughs> And of course, as you guys may have already noticed, the video doesn't include any forced uh, firmware updates or any errors that may occur during the update process. And that is mainly because I didn't experience any errors. So as you guys have seen it, I just followed the basic steps and everything has worked pretty well. So if you found the video useful, uh, please give it a thumbs up, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers.